Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome our patrons, CCTSD members, fellow photographers, and participants to our presentation today, entitled From Realism to Artistic Impression. Let me first tell you a little bit about the Chinese Canadian Photographic Society of Toronto. We are established in 1976 and is a nonprofit organization with 130 current members. Our mission is to explore the art of photography as our expression to support multiculturalism. Our members participate in professional activities and events to make their contributions to society. Let's talk a little bit about this group exhibition. The group exhibition showcases 54 members' photos selected from various club competitions in the past 10 years. The virtual group exhibition is divided into four parts. Part one to three present photographic realism, wildlife and street photographer, and artistic impression, special artistic effect photography and night scene photography. Part four, entitled Kensington Market, playing seamlessly as an engaging video, in fact, were photos contributed by a group of photographers. Digitally entitled to infuse passion, rhythm, and music into the still photos to transform Toronto's old landmark location of immigrants into a lively, colorful community for all in the 21st century. The presentation will also include photographers briefly sharing their creative vision and key techniques used in the award-winning photos. There will be a Q&A question at the end for audience to participate. So let's start part one of our presentation for night scene photography. To better understand the specifics about night scene photography, let's first take a look at what photography is. Photography is the process of producing images by the action of light projected on a film or an optical sensor. With the absence of daylight, night photography presents a new set of challenges to the photographer. Let's take a look at some of the challenges that photographer faces for night scene photography and how we overcome them. First is camera stability versus noise level. The low light in the environment necessitates the use of high ISO, which created noise and loss of detail in the photo. To compensate, we need to keep the camera shutter open for a longer period of time to absorb more light. This requires the use of a tripod and a shutter release cable to eliminate even the slightest vibration to the camera to keep the photo sharp. Second, there's shadows. We may need to use a flash to ensure sufficient lighting on the subject. This may result in undesirable shadows requiring the photographer to use one or more flashlights with varying strength and angles, a skill that takes time and practice to master. And then there's the problem with focus, white balance, and underexposure. The camera's autofocus, auto white balance, and auto ISO, fun ISO functions may not work properly due to low light. The photographer has to adjust the settings manually, which requires skills that the photographer may not be familiar with. In 2020, CCPST challenges its members with the Greater Toronto Area Night Scene Photography Competition. We will share the winning photos with you. If available, the photographer that took these photos is here to talk about how they conceived the photos and some of the technical details. If the photographer is not available, they have sent me some information that I will present on their behalf. Our competition is separated into groups A and B, with group A being the more advanced group. Let's start by looking at the first photo. The first photo is the gold medal winner for group A, taken by Nancy Lam. 
The title of the photo is Skating at Nathan Phillips Square. As per Nancy, she was observing people skating in the rain. The maintenance worker came on the ice to smooth the ice, and she saw the beautiful reflection of the skaters on the ice. She knew that she needed to push the shutter at the right time to capture the skater at the right position of the ring. When she noticed the boy in the red hoodie stepping on the ring, she immediately pressed the shutter when he got to the right position, and voila, the perfect picture. She took this picture with ISO of 3200, aperture of f22, and speed of 0 0.8 second using a tripod. She used F22 to get sufficient depth of field to capture all the details of the background. A speed of 0 0.8 second allowed her to keep the skater relatively sharp and still, which was an important element of this photo. Now let's move on to the second photo by Nancy Lam. This is the silver medal winner and it's called Wonderland. This was another skating ring photo taken in Canada's Wonderland. The stillness of the spectators around the skating ring compared to the fast actions of the skaters form a great contrast. Nancy was determined to showcase this contrast. She used a low ISO of 100, aperture f7.1, and a speed of four seconds. As the skaters were moving fast and the spectators were standing still, the four second shutter speed allowed her to capture the motion of the skaters, shown here with a bit of blurriness, and therefore achieve the effect as shown. The long shutter speed also allowed her to use a low ISO of 100 and reduce the noise level, thus improving the details and quality of the photo significantly. She was happy with how this photo had turned out. The last of Nancy's photo in this competition uh, won the silver medal and is called Merry Go Round. At Canada's Wonderland, she saw this Merry Go Round that created beautiful lines and a three dimensional formation as it turned. She wanted to capture the beautiful pattern, so she observed for a while until she saw when the pattern was most beautiful. With the camera set on the tripod, she set the shutter to 1.6 seconds with an aperture of f10, so she would achieve a deeper depth of field. The couple that stood in front watching did not move during the 1.6 second, so she got a very nice silhouette of them making the composition of the photo more interesting. The next photo was by Frankie Chan, and it won the Honorable Mention Award. Frankie saw the townhouses next to the Cathedral of Transfiguration. The cathedral formed a very nice convergence perspective leading to the silhouette of the cathedral at the end. He wanted to present to the audience the peaceful atmosphere of the street around the cathedral in a winter night. He used a tripod as he needed to have a slow shutter speed of one second to capture all the remaining light in the sky. Now let's move to the last picture in group A, taken by Jenna Chen under the bridge. This is also another honorable mention photo. This photo was taken when Jenna first started to learn photography. It was taken in downtown Toronto around King and River Street. She saw this on Toronto Star and wanted to try herself. Initially, she wanted to go when it was snowing, but not ended up having that chance. She also went in the morning, but was not able to create the atmosphere she wanted. So she went at night planning to create a horror movie feel with the pair of big eyes. She emphasized the brightness of the eyes as a contrast to the darkness around them. So that's all of our group A photos. Now let's move to group B. We are fortunate to have Florence here to show us and tell us a little bit about her photo. Her first photo 
is called The Beauty of Queen's Park, taken by Florence Lau, and it won the gold medal in the Group A competition.